All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Uh, depending on where you're at in the world, um, thank you so much for um, joining us. And um, yeah, so this is the session on affordable degrees at four-year institutions as part of our, our Shorelight Smart Savings uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Shannon. I am a Director of Enrollment Management with Shorelight, and um, I'll be moderating uh, the, this portion uh, of today's event. Um, I'm joined by Nathan Douglas, um, Admissions Counselor for International Students at Bridgewater College, and Manuela Hopper-McIntyre, uh, Managing Director at University of Wyoming, who are excited to speak to you today about affordable degrees at their institutions. Um, before we begin, just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, we ask that all participants remain on mute um, throughout the session, and we'd like you to use the, the question and answer button along the bottom of the screen um, to ask questions. So please um, refrain from using the chat feature. Then that's the normal kind of Zoom chat. Um, but at the bottom of your, scene, your screen, you'll see question and answer. And that's how we'd like for you to, um, to ask the questions. Um, so we'll hear from our presenters. Um, you can put questions in the chat as we go or in the question and answer as we go. Um, we will do our best to answer all of them. There will be a time at the end um, that we have for questions. Um, so um, just be patient as we'll, we'll do our best to get to your questions. Um, but without further ado, I'd like to welcome Nathan um, to begin his presentation. So Nathan, over to you. Thank you so much, Shannon. I'm going to go ahead and share my presentation. Uh, Right. Okay. Are you able to see the full presentation? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks again, everyone. My name is Nathan Douglas. I'm the International Admissions Counselors at Bridgewater College. I graduated from Bridgewater in 2022, so not that long ago, and I started working for them immediately after I graduated. So this is almost my second year working for them so far, and I absolutely love it. A little bit about where we're located. We are a we are a small private liberal arts college, and we're located in the beautiful Shenandoah Valley, about 15 minutes south of our nearest city, Harrisonburg, Virginia, and about two and a half hours from DC. Before I talk a little bit more about the college, I do want to talk a little bit about the town. So at Bridgewater, students are able to experience real connections with their peers, faculty, and the town of Bridgewater. We have 6,000 full-time residents, and students do have access to our 10 community parks, all within walking distance, into our many mountains as well. We do have an ice skating rink, which is available at a discount for our students, a mini golf course, a par three golf course, and a local movie theater as well. We also do have a downtown area for our students. It's a long strip of multiple restaurants for students to eat at, coffee shops, a local grocery store, ice cream shops, and so much more. And of course, safety is our number one priority at Bridgewater College. We are rated as one of the most safest towns in Virginia, um, as well as one of the safest colleges in the region as well. All right, I'm gonna go to the next slide. All right, talking a little bit more about our college, we do have a little over 1400 students in terms of enrollment and they hail from all different walks of life. 35% of them are from underrepresented races, ethnicities as well. And we also do have students coming from 20 different states and 13 different countries. Most of our students are coming from places like Nepal, um, India, China, um, and Africa as well. Most of our students who are coming in have an academic profile, um, a GPA of 3.24 to 4.04. Now, I will say um, in terms of residence life, students living on campus for all four years, they'll start off in a regular freshman dorm. Um, it's gonna have all the same amenities, free laundry. There's going to be a gaming room for students to kind of hang out and have movie nights. There's going to be a kitchen um, and study rooms as well. 
As far as our cafeteria goes, um, we do have an unlimited, unlimited buffet system. So students are able to come in and out as many times they want as well. So students are well kept um, and well fed at Bridgewater. All right. All right. Now, I do want to talk about the real value of our academic programs. Um, our most popular programs at Bridgewater is business administration, biology, health and exercise science, psychology, and liberal studies. Now, we do have a new major that we're excited to show our students. It will be released this fall. It's a new engineering major tailored for students who are interested in mechanical engineering. We also do have four graduate programs, and for a small school, that's not bad at all. We have a Master's of Science in Athletic Training tailored towards our students who are majoring in Health and Exercise Science. We do have a Master's in Digital Media Strategy as well, a Master's of Psychology tailored to our students who are interested in psychology field, and then also Human Resource Management tailored to students who are majoring in the Business Department. All right. Of course, here's the big slide. I believe that the number one factor that a lot of our international students have when considering colleges is the cost. Is it affordable? Is it too expensive? And the question is, it doesn't have to be. At Bridgewater College, we're very excited to announce our published tuition price of $15,000. Starting in 2024, students are paying a tuition of $15,000, which is really awesome. That doesn't include room and board. Room and board will also be the same amount, about $15,000. And with additional fees, the total charge will come down to just under $35,000. Every single student who is admitted to Bridgewater, a first time freshman student, is guaranteed a scholarship ranging from $2,500 to $5,000. It is renewable for four years, so you'll get that same amount from your freshman year until your senior year. The scholarship that you get is going to be determined upon your high school GPA. Students that have a GPA of 4.0 or higher are gonna get our highest scholarship of $5,000. We do offer an out-of-state scholarship. So um, all of our international students are going to be getting an additional $1,000 scholarship on top of whatever merit scholarship that we're giving you. So students have the ability to get up to $6,000 just based off their academic GPA and where they're coming from. We also have another scholarship opportunity called the Flurry Honor Scholarship. And this is available for students who have a 3.8 GPA and a 1260 SAT score. So if they submit those materials, they have a 1260 SAT, they have a 3.8 or higher GPA, they could be eligible for an additional $1,500 scholarship on top of their out-of-state scholarship and on top of their merit scholarship. So altogether, that's about seven. $7,500 in scholarships, which is pretty good. Now, Bridgewater also has a traditional affiliation with the Church of the Brethren. We have had inter international students in the past that identified with being a member of the Church of the Brethren, so we give out an additional $1,000 scholarship with that as well. So, once again, $15,000 tuition, room and board $15,000, coming down to about just under thirty-five, dollars which is about the same price at a public school. So at Bridgewater, you can get a private education at a public school price. All right. Now, just some admission requirements um, at Bridgewater. The minimum GPA that we accept is a 2.6 or higher GPA. Now, for our international students, we do require a English proficiency test before being admitted. Um, we have students that are submitting different types. We have IELTS, Duolingo, SAT, and TOEFL. Now, the minimum score requirement is going to be highlighted in bold. So for IELTS, it has to be a 6.5 or higher. For Duolingo, it has to be a 105 or higher. SAT, the minimum that we'll set, accept is an 830. And for TOEFL, it's going to be a 79, um, the internet-based test. We do have an early action deadline of November 15th. That means that if you apply to Bridgewater before or by that date, you will hear of your decision and your scholarship amount by the first week of December, so before the Christmas holidays are here in the US. We are also rolling admission. So that means that you can apply from the time our applications open up in August 1st, all the way up into our deposit deadline, which is May 1. So there is a big window of time. We also do have a second deadline, April 15th, meaning that for students who are um, admitted to Bridgewater, they have to send us additional materials, meaning that they have to submit 
a um, certification of finance form that shows them that they have the um, ability to pay to go to Bridgewater essentially. We'll need a bank statement, a bank letter, um, and also passport and permanent address. So we do have to have those documents come in and review them so we can give out an I-20. Um, and I think that is, that is it. Wonderful, thank you so much, Nathan. Um, we will go ahead and switch it over to Manuela now to share fr uh, from the University of Wyoming. Manuela, I think you're still on mute. Oh, sorry. Yes. And Nathan, if you unshare your screen, then I can probably get my screen up. Thank you. Sorry, the unmute is still. <laughs> <laughs> it, it gets all of us. <laughs> it does. Okay. Well, thank you so much um, for inviting uh, Wyoming International at the University of Wyoming um, to uh, present today as well. Um, we are uh, located here in Wyoming, and I have to say I am originally from Austria, so when I heard about Wyoming for the first time um, coming from abroad, I had no idea where that place was. We're right in the middle between uh, Colorado and Montana um, in the Rocky Mountain area. It's a, the University of Wyoming is a, is a, wonderful university in a smaller uh, college town where nestled right in, in, in between um, the valley of um, the Rocky Mountain region um, in, a, in, in a really, really beautiful area. We offer a one-of-a-kind college experience here with comprehensive curriculum, um, very wonderful advanced labs and classrooms, and there's also a lot of outdoor adventure in a really beautiful, beautiful setting. Um, again, here's a little map of where we are located. Um, Laramie, Wyoming is about two hours northeast of Denver, Colorado, which is a great uh, metropolitan area. Having said that, um, Laramie has about a population of 32,000, so it's a, it's a smaller community. It's a really great college town um, with the opportunity to get to places that are a little bit more vibrant and provide different, um, different kind of entertainment. Again, um, we're a small town, so it's very safe out here. Um, we're about, again, two hours from Denver and an hour and a half, a half from uh, Fort Collins, uh, Colorado, which is also a bigger city in Colorado. Our key industries are in higher education, technology. We have a lot of energy, renewable resources. We have a big health industry and a big computing industry out here. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of just like facts of uh, the university here. Um, we have a student population of about 11,000. Um, 4.5% of those students are international students from over 80 countries. So we have a pretty diverse um, campus. Um, we also have a student to faculty ratio of 13 to 1, which makes a student experience really comfortable because um, students typically uh, build really great relationships with our faculty members around campus. Having said that, our faculty members are also uh, from very diverse places around the world. So there's a lot of international faculty here on campus. Uh, one fact that's really helpful for the student to faculty ratio is that, um, again, the relationship building with faculty that can be very helpful for students um, in career and internship search. Um, also, uh, it helps in networking with colleges and departments and also um, statewide for career and internship opportunities. And then, of course, there are great opportunities for OPTs out there. Our campus has over 300 student clubs and organizations. Those um, clubs and organizations are either culturally focused, so we have all kinds of um, clubs from different countries um, where students can gather and kind of find a little bit of their home feel if they, you know, if they are homesick or want to get, um, want to get back to their roots. Um, some or many of those uh, student clubs and organizations are also very degree focused. So another opportunity for students to network, 
get out there, um, make sure that they get to uh, learn about the industry, um, and again, net, uh, networking for internship and also career opportunities. We are a tier one research university with um, almost a billion uh, of research money for students. Um, this is all sponsored research um, and grants op grant opportunities for students. And we have over 800 of our undergraduate students being involved in um, some of this research. And I'll talk a little bit more about this um, later in my presentation. Um, we're also an AACSB accredited college, college of Business, which is um, the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business International, which means that our degrees in the College of Business are recognized internationally. We are a top 10 um, university, top 10 public university here. Um, sorry, top 10. I, you know what? <laughs> in the almost top 100, sorry, um, topic, top public schools in the United States. Our petroleum engineering um, program is uh, number seven in the US and our pharma school is um, in the top 50 of the US um, rankings. Here is um, a list of our degree programs. We have over 130 degree programs for undergraduate students at the University of Wyoming. Um, some of the STEM programs are highlighted, which means we have a big variety of STEM degrees for international students amongst social sciences, humanities, um, uh, and uh, the College of Agriculture. We also have uh, quite a variety of graduate degrees, which I have not highlighted in my um, in my presentation since we are presenting for four year degree universities. Um, if you have any questions about our graduate programs, I'm very happy to share those with you. So why Wyoming? I know uh, students have uh, a lot of options in the United States, um, but we do provide a very affordable top quality education here in Laramie. Again, as a tier one research university, we have a ton of research opportunities for undergraduate and graduate students. We have amazing um, support services throughout campus for uh, not only our domestic students, but also for our international students. Um, we have great career opportunities, some internship opportunities, um, as well as OPT opportunities. Um, uh, having said that, we have um, under average living expenses in Wyoming in general. I think we're about 10 to 15 percent under the U.S. average. So that kind of lowers the expense for students um, to come here and uh, complete their degrees. We have a very diverse campus, um, global perspective high, very, very high quality of life and a very close knit community, meaning that students are typically involved um, within our outside of campus um, community in all kinds of different activities and events. Um, here are a couple of examples of um, student research opportunities. I was just in a meeting with our mechanical engineering uh, program on campus, and they shared with me that um, we have, a, of course, great wind farming out here. It gets a, a little bit windy out here once in a while, and that um, we're building a new wind farm just south um, east of Laramie, and once that wind farm is completed, um, Wyoming will be the largest offshore wind farm place in the world, so there are a lot of opportunities out there. Um, in the renewable energy sector um, in Wyoming. And then we also are the home of the NCAR Wyoming Supercomputing Center, which is only about 25 minutes from Laramie, um, where students do research in earth system sciences. Um, and this um, supercomputing center provides not only storage, but also data services. So our students are um, often involved in research with um, this project. So here is an example of um, on-campus employment. I, I did say that we have quite a few career opportunities um, in town while students are actually working, uh, studying on campus. 
And um, here's a typical undergraduate student example um, from a student from India who's uh, currently on our campus. He's getting an undergraduate degree in business. The tuition for and fees for the year is uh, approximately $22,900 for the academic year. Um, if the student receives a scholarship in the amount of $2,000 for the year and has an on-campus job where they work 20 hours per week, per week at about $12, $12 per hour, um, a student's tuition could be as low as $13,000, which is really incredible for, um, for a public four-year tier one research university. Um, just for your information, the University of Wyoming is the largest employer in Laramie um, and one of the largest employers in Wyoming. We have over 5,000 employees and approximately 75% of the positions that are on campus are student positions, resulting in um, approximately 3,600 positions um, available in an academic year. So students have the opportunity to work if they'd like to. Um, it's not only a great um, a great deal for uh, their wallet and for you know reducing their um, their expenses while they are here, but it also helps the student to build a resume. It gives them really great professional experience and especially U.S. work experience on their resume. Um, they also contribute, of course, to local economy um, and not only their own tuition. Um, but it also allows them to be fully um, integrated on campus academically as well as professionally, which is a really um, amazing opportunity for the students. Um, here are some, um, some product data and deadlines. So um, our deadline, we still are open for summer, which we only accept undergraduate students for, um, is in early April. And then um, classes start May 20th, so students are encouraged to move in about a week before classes start so they can get accommodated um, and get everything in place. Our fall dates uh, for applications are July 14th, and then our move-in date is August 15th, and classes start on Monday, August 26th. Um, here, is the, here is a presentation of the annual costs for our undergraduate um, degrees for tuition and fees. So without any um, scholarships or work experience, it is $22,864 uh, $22, I'm sorry, it's really early here and I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm awake, but I'm not quite a hundred percent here. Um, so, uh, again, this is about $11,000 per semester, and um, considering scholarships and any work opportunities on campus, um, students can really reduce um, that uh, tuition and fees uh, tremendously. Again, housing and dining, which I have not on this slide, um, is about, if the student lives live on campus, it's about $6,000 per semester. So um, that is also pretty much very um very much under the average U.S. Um, uh, expenses for, uh, for housing and dining and meals. Here are a couple of entry requirements. So we have a, a GPA of 2.5 um, for transfer students that would be a 2.0 and our English um, requirements are a little bit lower at an ILTS of 6.0, TOEFL at 71 and a Duolingo at 100. Um, we do have an excellent English as the second language program on campus that supports our international students with all their efforts. They um, not only provide um, accredited courses that students can take, but we also have a very, um, very broad program for students to attend free classes, um, language and conversation and writing sessions, which is um, really helpful for our international students. Again, internship and career opportunities are great out here. We have um, over 300 international companies um, and organizations that come to the University of Wyoming and recruit on campus every year. And then also we have very um, department uh, and program specific recruitment fairs throughout the year. Again, over 3,600 3, jobs are available for students on campus, basically 
pretty much on an academic year. Um, our areas of industry are in the energy and renewable energy sector, in computing, healthcare, higher education, and agriculture. And again, um, I'm referring to my meeting with the mechanical engineering um, faculty member, and I call it a faculty fact. I, I thought that was pretty cool. He told me just last week that their students usually have a job lined up before they even graduate. Okay, so this is all the information I have for today. Um, if you have any other questions or um, thoughts, ideas, concern, concerns, um, please let me know. I'm available um, via email and we also have a website that has a lot of the information that I was not able to share today. So thank you. Thank you so much, <clears throat> Manuela. Um, I am just going to turn it over to Lauren Stone from Shorelight. Um, she's just going to share briefly about Utah Tech. Um, so Lauren, over to you. Thank you, Shannon. Um, actually, oh, whoops. We can still hear you. Okay, great. Sorry, a little internet blips. Um, I, unfortunately, our presenter for Utah Tech was not able to come this morning at the last minute. So um, I just wanted to mention Utah Tech because it's a, a wonderful school that um, I think is, is interesting for, for um, many students um, because of its flexibility. It has a, a wide range of programs. It is very um, affordable and um, has, has some good scholarships for all students and, um, it's also very flexible on GPA. So if you're a little worried about your admissibility to other schools, make sure that Utah Tech is one of the schools that you look at. They have English language programs if you need some English before you start. And they also have, um, they'll accept students with almost any GPA. So it is a great place to uh, start if you're not, if you need a little bit of extra help and support um, in your academic journey. So just wanted to make sure that uh, that everyone takes a, a look at Utah Tech. We're sorry that we aren't able to do a presentation on it this morning, uh, but we wanted to at least mention it. Um, so uh, I think with that though, probably Shannon, we wanted to turn it over um, to answer questions live. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. So we've got a few questions. We've been, um, thank you to everyone who's been helping answer <clears throat> as questions have come in. Um, let's see. First one I see um, in Wyoming, Wyoming, is it, <laughs> is it easy to get a job on campus? <laughs> would you say? <laughs> yes, it is. So I have worked with um, many, many students um, from all kinds of different countries and any individual that wanted a job on campus usually gets one. Now, of course, they're probably not going to be, you know, they're not going to be in the higher administration. They're on campus positions. Um, Part-time students are allowed to work up to 20 hours a week, which is great but it really integrates them into the campus community. Um, it makes really great connections for students. And again, it's super easy and almost guaranteed for students to get a job on campus. Right, wonderful. Um, there's a question about a students from Pakistan. He scored an overall six on an Oxford English proficiency test. Do universities accept this for undergrad? Um, so all universities accept, they have different requirements on what English proficiency tests that they will accept and those scores. Um, and so you'll just need to work, um, you know, with your recruiter um, or your application advisor um, to get that specific information on, you know, on what the schools that you're looking at accept and what those scores are. Um, again, it varies across the board. Um, there's not always many schools that have the same, same requirements. Um, let's see, for Bridgewater College, um, Nathan, can you give us an idea of what country international countries international students come from to study at Bridgewater? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a couple of examples that I have in mind, especially students from um, this past class, we've had students come from Nepal. Um, students have been coming from Spain, um, let's see, Peru, Colombia. I think we had one from Venezuela as well, um, but really countries from all over, especially in every continent. Um, Asia, I said before, um, I know we've had uh, some students from China and a student from Japan recently come to Bridgewater, so. 
Great. <clears throat> Wonderful. And what about you, um, Manuela? Would you share what countries international students come from for, at Wyoming? Yes, yes. We have, like I said, we have students from over 80 countries. So they come basically from all over the world. But, the you know, a, a, a lot of students come from um, Africa. We have a lot of students from Asia, of course. There's big European students. I couldn't get into each individual country. They're basically from everywhere. Um, there are, of course, a lot of Indian students. We have some students from China, um, Vietnam, um, Latin America. There's a quite a big population um, from Argentina. So it's again from from all over the place. It's kind of hard to um, to say um, all 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 of them. Yes, many countries. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see, Lauren. Do you want to just share a little bit? The question is, does Utah Tech have scholarships? It does have scholarships, sadly, because um, I, I don't actually know the amount, but we um, they absolutely do have scholarships. The overall, um, I'll try uh, to see if I can and get the information about that. If you give me a couple of minutes, come back to me. Um, sure. I'll have that for you in a sec. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me check. There's a couple others that have been answered. Um, doo -doo -doo. Um, on campus housing. Yep. That's required at Bridgewater. Um, we got the answer for this for Bridgewater. So what is the deposit amount for Bridgewater in Wyoming? So um, the deposit amount for Bridgewater is $300. Um, Manuela, what is the deposit amount for Wyoming? I believe it's $2,000. Okay, $2,000, yep. mm -hmm. okay. Um, let's see here, we've got that one. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a master, an MS in computer science offered at Wyoming University, and it is STEM designated. Um, okay, let me see if there's any other question. Actually, I've got uh, the Utah Tech information. Okay, uh, perfect. So um, for, for freshmen, it does vary by uh, GPA, but sort of an average would be um, $5,500 for the year, uh, as long as they're enrolled full time. Uh, but again, I'm going to, um, to just, you know, remind everybody that the amount of the scholarship is, is relative to the, the cost of the, of the school. So you have some schools that are really expensive that have high scholarships. And you have schools that are already very inexpensive. Um, and then, you know, with hats off to Bridgewater, you have an excellent scholarship and an affordable price. Uh, same is true at Utah Tech, but uh, you've got to look at the whole pack package there. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, Let's see. And there was another question. I just answered it asking about specific scores required for schools. So um, you can definitely work with your check with your recruiter on that. They'll be able to share that information. Or I know some of that information was shared um, this morning um, in uh, the presentations. And it should also most likely be on the school's websites. Um, you can go in and check to see what uh, English test scores um, are accepted and what those scores are. Um, Let's see here. I think that is most of the questions. Um, there's one, Lauren, not sure what you would suggest. Um, they have a student that wants to be a librarian in the future. The student is interested in studying at U Utah Tech and is wondering what major the student should take. That may I'm be sorry, that yeah, that uh, that one's a, a tough one for me to answer without yep. uh, without our, our subject matter expert on the on the call. Yes. But please, <laughs> I will always say that these detailed questions go to your recruiter, um, follow up with the team at Shorelight. Um, we are more than happy to dive into your specific situation and um, and help get you a, a detailed answer for your case. And last question before we close, um, do either of your schools, Bridgewater, Wyoming, have a nursing degree? Yes, um, the University of Wyoming does have a nursing degree. Okay, <clears throat> wonderful. Nathan? 
We do not have a nursing degree at our school, but we've had students who are interested in the medical field. They come in majoring in biology, health, um, health track, and then they go to graduate school um, for, their, for their education. But we do not have a specific nursing degree at Bridgewater. Gotcha. All right. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys so much for your time um, presenting today. Um, thank you to everyone who has joined. Um, thank you for the questions. Um, just a reminder, we have two other sessions that are about to start. Um, so feel free to join one of them. There's a session on budget-friendly university towns and cities. And then there's another session going at the same time, uh, which is on scholarships for international students. So I definitely encourage you to attend one of those sessions um, and continue learning as much as you can about all of these amazing schools, uh, affordable cities, and the wonderful scholarships uh, that they offer. So thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Manuela. Really appreciate it. And um, have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you. Thank okay. you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>